Good morning, everybody. <laughs> I am Isabel again, um, and this morning uh, my session is about accessible movement. So we're going to talk about um, movement from the perspective of um, limitations, people who have uh, chronic conditions, people who have um, who work with that patient population, and uh, people who have gone a long time without movement, and they need to um, get back to uh, being able to have that ability. So um, what is accessibility? Can somebody tell me what, what you think accessible means? Having options, okay. What else? Available. Available, okay. What else? What does accessibility mean to you? Achievable, very good, yes, okay. So accessibility simply means having the option to access a certain set of systems or entities, okay? And when it comes to movement, a lot of people are shy. They don't feel welcome in participation because they simply don't have that access to do the things that are being required to do, right? And some of my personal story, for example, in 2016, I was having a great deal of trouble being able to reach just the cups in my cupboard because of shoulder pain. I have hypermobility um, and being able to move certain parts of my body was incredibly painful, right? Um, on my way here, I was able to pick up my very heavy, because I packed way too much, um, luggage and put it above the head compartment. But it's taking a lot of years for me to be able to do that. That wasn't accessible for me in the past, and it's taking a lot of people, a lot of systems, a lot of practice, and a lot of opportunities for me to be able to reach that level of mobility. And that's my goal for other people. Um, unfortunately, not everybody can reach all the levels because sometimes there are there's damage that has occurred that it's very difficult to repair and gain full mobility. But my goal for the clients that I work with, um, it's to work with the goals that they do have. So what do they want to do in terms of movement? What do they want to achieve? And how do they want to maintain it? So that's what we wanna do. So that's why movement needs to be accessible because people are coming from all different levels of abilities, and not only abilities, they have different levels of resources, right? So for somebody who is able to go hiking every single day and practice that movement in nature, um, they're going to gain that level of ability perhaps much faster than someone who works at a desk all day. Maybe somebody in a corporate environment who has to wear restrictive clothing, that even within that environment, it's not as easy to facilitate movement within the place that they are in order to achieve their goals. So all of those things have to be considered in order for people to reach the level of movement ability that they, they hope to reach, okay? So what do we need to take into consideration when we are even starting to make those goals? The first thing that we have to consider is awareness, right? If we're not aware of what things are keeping us from reaching that ability, then we can't work on those things, right? So the awareness of the ability or the limitations that we have, as well as the awareness of the environment that we have to work with, right? Um, we also have to work on rehabilitation, one of the things that we talk about a lot is foundational movement. So our feet, if you've been shod in tight shoes all of your life, right? Your feet are not going to be able to move freely in many different environments. So we have to start with rehabilitation. Um, and then from rehabilitation, we work on progression, right? So being able to progress given the level of ability of each individual, right? Okay, so this morning, we're going to do some partner work. So I want you to identify 
a partner that you can work with, okay, and feel comfortable. If you feel comfortable with that partner doing some, some touch so they can facilitate um, some of the movement that we want to do, then I want you to identify the partner to do that, okay? So what are some of the foundational movements that we do on our daily life just in order to get by activities of daily living, you know, getting in and out of the car, going up and down the stairs if we have the ability to do that, um, going through the airport, etc. So what are some of those foundational movements that we get to do? Walking. And what, what's involved in walking? Balance. What else? Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Your gait. Yes. Breathing. Absolutely. Okay. Proprioception is a huge one. Yes. And we're going to talk a little bit about that too. Um, what else? What, what's another foundational movement that you do? Um, in order to get through your day. Lifting. Lifting, yes. So that's a foundational movement. What else do you do that necessitates lifting? That's also a foundational movement. Bending, so hinging, right? Yes. And that's, you need more hinging in order to do that as well. What else? Very good. When you're opening a door, what are you doing? Pulling. Right. Pulling and pushing. Okay. So a lot of those are foundational movements and we take a lot of them for granted, right? But for a lot of people, those movements are very difficult. They, um, uh, they cause pain. Okay. They don't have the ability to do that movement at a complete level. So someone may have to, in order to just open a door, open a little bit, step, and open it a little more because they don't have the ability to do that push motion, right? And I know that because I've been in that situation. So with all that said, let's get up and let's do some movement. And let's try to stay close to the partner that we have identified. And if you're not able to get up and come all the way down here, I want you to stay next to a chair so you can. Don't be shy. Come on in. High level academic symposium. Taking them to have any, you know. Yeah. Okay. Movement. So we're going to do some foundational things even before. Even before we can talk about foundational movement. We need to talk about and recognize and bring awareness of the foundation that we need to use in order to get those foundational movements going. Okay. So if you can either take off your shoes, if you don't feel comfortable taking them off, we can pretend. Okay. And I want you to pretend you're picking something off the floor with your toes. Okay. That's a micro movement. That's incredibly important for foot health. Okay. So open your toes and pretend you're picking something up. Okay. You see how much it requires, not just from your toes, but the movement on your ankle, okay? If you're not able to do that on your own, if you need to hold on to a chair, that's why I've put them in there. You can hold on to the, um, to the seats in the auditorium as well. 
So let's pretend that we're doing that. Now, if you can, just with that, pick up the item, hold it between your toes, and then bring that to your ankle. Okay? I see a lot of toes that have come off. So let's try that again. Bring it down, hold that item between your toes, right? And bring it to your ankle. And keep that item in between your toes. Okay, so can somebody tell me how many things are you using within that small movement? <laughs> okay. What are you using? You're using balance, okay. So if you have no balance to begin with, how can you even do that, right? So that's something that a lot of people unfortunately are lacking and we need to work on that even further back foundation in order to be able to perform that movement, right? What else do we need? What else are we doing? Toe strength, right? So if your feet are in this position, I can't even get mine that close anymore, all day long, all right, they're being compressed, they're being, um, uh, what do you call it, encased, and the feet are not able to develop movement and the strength that comes from that movement, you're not going to be able to grasp the things that you need. You're not going to be able to have the strength for that grass, correct? Right. And then um, we have the movement of the ankle, right, that we need to bring it to another part of our body, right? So if you're looking to go from here to picking something up with your toes because your hands are, for whatever reason, occupied, right, you are not able to do that. So what I want you to focus on on this movement is the fact that some of you can do this very easily and you may be taking it for granted. But for a lot of people, there is a lot that needs to happen before we can even get to that point, okay? Now let's look at balance. Can you balance on one foot, okay? And if you cannot do that, I want you to modify it and start from here. So start by just lifting the front of your foot and leaving it on the ground, right? That requires even, that re still requires balance, more balance than you do if you're standing on both feet, right? And that's how you can start to practice. So instead of going from something big that, you know, perhaps is not possible for you, you can step back, step back, step back, and break every movement into something smaller so you can build the ability from the ground up and be able to do it. So let's see the awareness of where we are. So let's do that balance from having our heel right on the floor, okay? Let's lift our heel on the floor and please hold on to the chair if that's what you need to do, okay? Let's bring that to your ankle, okay? And then let's bring that up. So what are we doing to maintain that balance? What do we need? <laughs> <laughs> what do we need? We need proprioception. What else do we need? We need, we need strength to maintain that balance, right? So can you see that if somebody is um, grasping with pain in their left hip, that doing this movement is not even possible, right? So we need to take that layer back and rehabilitate and take care of the foundation of where that pain is even coming from, okay? There is something that happens with um, fascia and connective tissue. Are you guys all, um, are you all familiar with fascia? Okay, so fascia has tensile strength, right? And one of the things that happens in um, folks like me who have connective tissue disorders is that that tensile strength of the fascia is lost. So with that loss, the muscles now tense up 
in order to be able to hold on to your structure. So, and with that loss and that, um, and that increased tension in the muscle comes pain. Right? So one of the things that I experience very often is pain in, in my articulation. So we have, if I'm doing this, but I'm experiencing pain in here, I need to make sure that the strength in that side of my body is present so I can do the motion that I need to do. Okay? So let's do that on the opposite side and see if it's any better or worse. Let's start with our heel. Okay, and now let's bring that heel up off the ground. Okay, and I want you to observe, is your balance better or worse on that side? Okay, bring it to your ankle. Okay, and bring it up. And please hold on to the chair if you need to. Okay, do you observe anything besides the worse balance? Is there anything that you feel that's different from this side to the other? Okay. What else? More fatigue? Okay. What else? Anybody feels any pinging, any pain, any discomfort? Okay. Nerve pain. Okay. So that is the foundation of what we need to do is observe, okay, practice this foundational movements, and then we observe how our body feels in those movements. Because if we don't even have the basic level of awareness, how can we work on, you know, moving forward from there, okay? Now, if you need to hold on to the chair, do that, please. And now we're going to work on stepping up, okay? So what do you need to step up on a, you know, the stairs, or you're going, you know, uphill, what do you need to do? What are you moving? Just look at my foot and tell me how many things are in motion. Okay. Everything from the bottom down pretty much is in motion, right? And I need to have good proprioception to know where my body is in space as well, right? So I don't step off, so I don't step on something that's sharp or hurtful and hurt myself in some way. So let's do that motion. Let's start with our left. Okay, now let's pretend there's an obstacle in the way and that we have to go to the side. We're going through narrow stairs and we're going through the side. Okay, now what did you observe in that? How did that feel? Okay, what else? There is a stretch, yes. There's actually a little bit of a stretch in both, yes. Okay, so, and we're all going to feel things a little bit different right? Based on our own structural composition and where our body is in this uh, point in time. So let's do the other side, okay? Let's go up the stairs. And now let's do our obstacle and go to the side. Okay? So how did that feel? <laughs> How's that different from the other one? Anybody observed any difference or did it feel pretty much the same? On the right side? You were on the left? Okay. <laughs> so more coordination. So we have a lot of the time, a lot of imbalances, right? From one side of the body to the other. And we don't take time to stop and observe those things and to be able to say, okay, am I overcompensating on one side and doing everything on that side all the time? So that side perhaps is stronger, okay? Am I overcompensating because I have maybe pain in one side and I am not necessarily 
overcompensating on one side, but plainly avoiding using the other side of my body, okay? I have scoliosis, so I have to be very, very conscious that I am not overusing my right side because my left side tends to be more painful because of the scoliosis, okay? So let's move on to some rotation in the hips. So we're gonna do this as if we are crossing an obstacle. So we're going over, use the chair if you need the balance, and then what did you observe on that movement? Can you do the entire rotation? <laughs> and then let's do the other side. Okay, so that's how we often have to break down things in order to be able to advance. I know that we all like to go and go and go and go, but being able to take those steps back when you don't have the full capability, especially for that movement, and being able to strengthen from the ground up is really important. There's a lot of times that I use tools to do this. These are two nut balls, for example, and I work with this a lot to um, release the fascia, right? So I use this um, on my, I can't lean on that, but lean on a wall, use it on your arms, use it on your legs. I have smaller ones from these, and these are amazing for the feet. So you can roll it under your feet and stretch that fascia, especially if you go all day you know, wearing regular shoes, if you have to, um, or you, you do choose to, you know, wear heels of any type, then that is a wonderful release for your fascia. Because when you're wearing heels, what happens is that your calf muscles are getting shortened, right? So then that's, when you go back to the ground, that's pulling, and that shortened muscle, is re it's going to cause tension and pain. Um, and lack of mobility. So if you use this to release that fascia, that's very, very helpful. Another tool that I use a lot, and this is not you know, for exercises or because I'm looking for cute glutes, but because this is a great release for the hips. You know, When you add resistance to what you're doing, it gives you the ability to recover that tensile strength of the fascia that we were talking about. And when that tensile strength is present, then that's going to encapsulate better your muscles, your uh, joints, and everything in your body in order to be able to perform everything that you need to perform, okay? So we can do this with our arms, okay? And what I want you to do with your partner really quick is I want you to have your partner resist on one side, and I want you to open the arm on the other side. Okay, so push, and you're going to be one pushing and one is pulling in order to do the movement, okay? There we go, so like this, like that, yeah, like this, so you're going to push in and you're going to push the other way, and add that resistance, okay? All right, guys. And we're now out of time. Um, so we're going to be stopping here. But thank you for staying for the session. And what I want you to do is to stay in your awareness. Stay on your awareness of how these things feel so you can then break it down and participate in your own movement. All right? Thank you, everybody. Thank you so much. You know, a lot of the movement sessions are not accessible to everyone. I think this is a, a movement session that was accessible to everyone and everyone could participate. Big round of applause. Thank you.